Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyday Off-Road. Today we're going to be talking about one of the more controversial topics, at least on all the Facebook forums and every TJ forum that I can find, and that's axles, so stay tuned. You're there, you're about to slip off. There it is, go! So as you may can tell from the title of the video and the thumbnail, today's topic is going to be all about axles on the TJs, and really the main question is, when should you upgrade your axles? And I know everybody wants a clear, concise answer, but unfortunately that's not what we're gonna to come to today because it's all about how you use it, what kind of wheeling you do, what kind of driving you do, what size tires you have, a whole different combination of things. So stay tuned as we're gonna walk you through all of that. First off, we need to get a little bit of the basics out of the way and talk about what axles came on the TJ, which was a 1997 to 2006 Wrangler. And there was a various combination of axles you could get uh, from the factory in a TJ. The primary axle combo that came in the majority of the TJs is the Dana 30 front and the Dana 35 rear. Now, that is the base of the base. If you went and bought a, you know, just Base model X, base model Sport, definitely the SE, which is the four cylinder you were gonna get, the Dana 30 and the Dana 35. Now, if you bought a Sport, a Sahara, and obviously the Rubicon, which is not really in this conversation, you could opt in and get the Dana 44 rear axle, which was by far a worth it upgrade for the TJ. So those are really the three uh, main axles that we're gonna be talking about as far as what came on the TJ from the factory. You have the Dana 30 front and the Dana 35 rear and then the optional 44 rear. So if you're new to the channel, we have a 2004 X, which is kind of the base model Jeep. So ours therefore came with the Dana 30, 35 combination. So what all goes into figuring out when you should upgrade your axles? That's the big question we want to answer today. And unfortunately, there's no short answer. Um, a lot of it depends on how you wheel it, how often you wheel it, and the biggest one, what size tires do you want to run for the style wheeling you do? Now, if you're new to the channel, we just upgraded our 2004X with the Dana 30 35 to 37 inch tires. However, right before we did that, we swapped out the rear 35 for a Fusion aftermarket 44. We had shattered a set of spider gears on the Dana 35 at Winrock about two years ago. And the Dana 35 really was the weak point in the entire drivetrain. Those are known to be weak. So before we were comfortable running a 37, we upgraded the Dana 35 to a 44. Stuff like knowing that just comes from wheeling experience and seeing other people and how they wheel their rigs compared to how I want to build mine. We talk about wheeling style and how you wheel. That's a huge factor into when you should upgrade your axles. We've got a five speed transmission in ours. Uh, those with the automatic can take it a little bit easier. Um, a lot of times we have to go ahead and bump something when an automatic can kind of feather the gas a little bit more and really crawl up an obstacle. So those with the manual transmission may find themselves wanting to upgrade a little earlier, um, but it's really, really, really just dependent on how you drive it, what your gearing is, what size tires you want to run, we tend to take it real slow when we can. Um, I really have never even hit the rev limiter on this thing while off-road. We like to take it nice and slow, let the tires do the work, let the low gears do the work, um, let the four liter really shine because it's a low end torquey engine. And none of that really requires a whole lot of work out of your axles. When you start putting the axles to work, at least the housings and the shafts are when you are really trying to crawl up an obstacle, putting a lot of stress on it. Definitely when you get to bumping things and starting to bounce, whenever R starts to bounce, I push the clutch in. I don't let it bounce. Um, people always ask, how in the world are you still running a Dana 30 on 37s? Well, my answer is driving style, and it always is driving style. And I'm not sure some people comprehend why um, people can get away with running a stock front axle on 37s when you do the type of wheeling we do. 
And that's probably the biggest question I get asked now, especially that I've swapped the 35 out in the back, is why are you still running a Dana 30 on 37s? And that's the answer I always give is, well, drive it the way that you want to drive it for your axles and it should hold up. Now, as you can see, we may have a Dana 30 up front, but it is definitely not all factory. We've got an Eaton E-Locker in it. And with the Eaton, I went ahead and upgraded to 30 spline um, shafts. And for shafts, we went with RCV axles which are supposed to be the strongest you can get. So the internals of this Dana 30 really are or beyond what a 44 is. So at this point, your weak spot really is the housing itself, especially the C's. And I know I've mentioned before that we may gusset it. I still think that's a good idea, just haven't done it yet. So that's another thing that you factor in is if you're running or want to keep your stock and stock width axles is they make a lot of upgrades for it. Uh, you don't have to run just a bone stock Dana 30. So 35s, I say the bare minimum is to have upgraded stock axles. I wouldn't run a 35 without a few upgrades, especially internals like we mentioned. You will want Kermali shafts or RCVs and probably an upgraded spline count. Um, that would be what I'd recommend to go to 35s just to handle that extra mass. When we get to 37s, that's where we upgraded our rear. 35, we went to a 44, and we're still running our factory Dana 30 with the upgrades that I've already mentioned. Um, 37s, I'd say a bare minimum is Dana 44s. We're pushing it with the Dana 30, I'm not gonna lie. Um, obviously, optimally, you want to have two 44s for 37s. I think that would be plenty to handle it. So 33s, 35s, 37s, when you get up to 40s and bigger, really the recommended thing is to run Dana 60s or one tons. That pushes the whole tire outside the body of the Jeep. Uh, those are plenty plenty strong to handle 40 inch tires on a vehicle this light again everything in this video is our opinion based off of our wheeling experience and others we've seen a lot of things are kind of that fine balance of maybe you can get away with it but it's not the best thing you need to be doing we are actually in that category with our front it's plenty strong to handle our wheeling style, in my opinion. Obviously, we're not gonna go to Moab and bounce the thing up uh, Bridget's Canyon uh, with a Dana 30 on it. If we get in a situation where we're sitting there hopping, uh, we winch. That's just kind of the sacrifice you have to give. A lot of people sit there on the trail telling you to just go, 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 hit it, hit it, hit it. And they don't know your vehicle like you do, so Trust your limits, trust your driving skill, trust your vehicle, the way you built it. I've turned every bolt on this thing myself other than installing the gears. So I know where my weak spots are. I know when to push it. I know when not to push it. And that's really all it takes. That's just, it's such a big thing. Just know your vehicle and you'll do fine. So the main answer to the question today, when should you upgrade your axles? When you feel like it's necessary based off of your wheeling experience not anybody else's it's easy for somebody to sit over there and tell you hey if you're going to 35s why on earth are you not on dana 44s well i would tell them that i wheeled for three years on a dana 30 35 knew the limits of my rig based off the way i built it therefore i felt comfortable doing it and i never broke so here's our opinion on tire size. This is probably why a lot of people are here. It's the main question. What size tires can I run without having to do any axle upgrades? And this is just gonna be a, a baseline opinion of mine out of the off-road experience I have, the off-road experience I have of watching other people, and uh, just kind of a culmination of that plus a lot of research. So if you wanna run 33s, you're fine. You can off-road 33s all you want to on stock axles. And unless you're sitting there just bouncing the thing, trying to do buggy trails, you should not have a problem. Now that is, this comes with a huge disclaimer. I have no idea what the condition of the axles are. 
you could have gotten a axle that has been up north, has been in the cold, and it's gone through freeze thaw, freeze thaw, and everything is just weaker. You could get out there and you could bend a shaft, you could break a C. As far as a strong uh, factory Dana 30, 35, you should be able to handle 33s fine. Bumping up to 35s, I ran 35s on my Dana 30 and Dana 35 for three years and had no issues other than shattering a set of spider gears in the rear end. Now granted, I had upgrades. The factory Dana 35 was truly stocked for a long time. The Dana 30 was stocked for about six months until I put the locker in it and did the RCV shafts. So the majority of the hard wheeling we've done on the Dana 30, it has been uh, upgraded even though it is still a Dana 30. When we got ready to bump up the 37s is when I decided to pull the trigger and do a 44 swap in the rear end. Um, the 35 just made me really nervous going up to a 37. A 37 is a huge, huge weight jump from 35s, especially adding these beadlock wheels. Everything got heavier, everything got bigger. That's a lot more rolling mass on that little chunk in the Dana 35. The ring gear on the Dana 35 is like seven and a quarter inches, I think. And the Fusion I have is almost nine. It's like eight and three quarters. So the ring gear is probably your most common thing that'll break inside the differential. Probably the most common axle breakage of all is breaking a shaft or a U-joint. With RCVs, we eliminated the U-joint and the shaft is a lot heavier duty with 30 splines, so that's why I feel comfortable with our Dana 30 in the front. To emphasize to all you guys out there with a TJ that you see me wheeling in these videos, my axles really just aren't that built. It's very doable to get a TJ like this, take it and do some pretty extreme wheeling without going and buying one tons, without having to know how to weld. Really the Dana 35 was the only part I was uncomfortable about after shattering that set of spider gears. I knew it was only a matter of time until the 35 went, uh, specifically the ring gear. And when that happens way out in the middle of nowhere, you really have no other option other than to try to get it back to the truck. And even that sometimes can be easy. So before we went to 37s, I just decided it was time to go ahead and upgrade to a 44. Hope you guys learned something today. We talked about the Dana 30, we talked about the Dana 35, and we talked about the Dana 44. Like I said, it all depends on your driving style, how you choose to push the vehicle, when your limits are, when you stop, just admit, hey, I'm gonna winch, I don't wanna break. That's the number one key. You could break any axle if you sat there hopping it, hopping it, hopping it with it floored. I mean, it's just all about how you drive. So that's the main point for today. Again, I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. Find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram. Every Day Off Road is on all social media platforms. We love to get your questions. We love to talk to you guys about TJs. That's it for this time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time on Every Day Off Road.